Whether it's ancient combat or modern sport, winning is what it's all about. I have to conquer a skill that I know absolutely nothing about. But how do you win? The history channel car is history. This man has learned the hard way. Now he's ready to show you. It's not a race, it's a marathon. A test of endurance unlike any other. The object? Demolish as many cars as you can without getting destroyed yourself. Who does it? Grown men with grown-up boy toys. And I'm going to join them. I have to conquer a skill that I know absolutely nothing about. I have to learn how to win at the ancient and historic sport of Demolition Derby. It's an amazing test of endurance for man and machine. For this man and this machine, I must be completely mad. The Demolition Derby is one of America's hidden treasures. It's been around for decades, and every year, thousands of spectators come to hundreds of events at county fairs and racetracks. An average event will have 60 to 100 cars. Very few of these will survive, and only one will be left running. I can't believe I've agreed to do this. Why do they do it? It's not about winning, it can't be. It must be something to do with the human fascination for destruction and demolition. Big bangs, and the bigger the better. They call it a sport, but to me it looks more like a battle. And like a soldier, a driver can't win without the right equipment. So obviously, for a demo derby, we're looking for something... To help me pick out the perfect vehicle, I enlist a couple of derby veterans, Eric Griffin and Sean McKinney, who own and operate a muffler shop in Oxnard, California. OK, well, look, there's, there's a couple over there. How about... My education begins when I think I spot a winner. I mean, it's got a really good engine, and it's small and compact, and, and what do you think? Dangerous. Very yeah. dangerous. Yeah, that, not what you want. You probably want a little more space between here and where you're going to actually be sitting. So we're not looking for a sports car or anything like that? Definitely not a sports car. Full size. So uh, what, what, lots of, lots of metal. So what are the best cars for, for our purposes? The ones that we prefer are uh, mid-70s GM cars. We like the ones that were made after 1973 because they have really strong bumpers on them. Gas guzzlers. Yeah, old gas guzzlers. I feel a bit like Goldilocks. My first choice? Definitely too small. My second choice? Too big for a beginner, plus a couple of other problems. Things like the distributor being in the front like it is, I'm not so sure. OK? I have a feeling car number three is going to be just right. OK, well, well what is it, first of all? This is an Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile. Probably uh, early 80s model. Can we look under the under the hood there? Why don't you pop it right over there? It's got water in it. That's a good sign. Why don't you pull out that dipstick and see what the oil looks like? Okay. Look at that. That looks pretty clean. Looks like we've got a good motor here. So it's pretty impressive, really, this one. I think it? we got a good car, yeah. We've chosen a 1984 Oldsmobile 98 with an eight-cylinder engine. It still looks somewhat respectable, but not for long. Everything that we love about our cars is about to be removed from this one. It's kind of like gutting a fish, but in reverse. We're going to throw out the flesh and keep the bones. The amazing thing is that everything we're ripping out of this car is all the things that made the car beautiful and desirable in the first place, you know? All the lining, all the comfortable seats, the cushions, the fabric interior, the beautiful bits of chrome, everything out. But I have to say, I never knew there were so many weird places in a car that you could get to. The interior's been gutted. Anything in here that might fly around during a crash or burn up if it catches fire, it's all gone. So all the seats have gone except for the driver's seat, the door panels have gone, the carpets, the headliners, all the lining, the dashboard and all the instruments, everything. 
Every derby has rules about making cars crash-worthy. They vary according to the promoter. But anything attached to the car that could fly off onto the track and become a projectile has to go. So, not just the glass, the hubcaps, chrome, any bits of plastic trim like this one, the wing mirrors, the emblems, and both front and back, all the lights and the light assemblies have to come out. On the hood, there's this very dangerous piece of trim. That's got to go. And finally, this fine-looking grill. Stripping down the car has taken most of the day. I'm ready for a break. Eric and Sean have other ideas. Apparently, it's time to talk tactics. But the test track isn't exactly what I expected. Bumper cars. Yeah. That's right, That's bumper cars. The problem with Demolition Derby is that you can't learn how to win with your real car, unless you want to wreck it. OK, so what do I do here? You want to try to get good front ends on shots on people with the back of your car. Come in here from a little angle, try to break the radiator out. Or... So I just ram them straight on like no, that? You want to use the back of your car if you can. Try not to use the front back? of your car. Why do I use the back? Because you want to protect your motor and There's engine. There's vital organs up here. It's the up heart here. of your <laughs> derby car is up there. So I'm going to hit them with the back of my car? Yeah, with the back of your car. Uh, coming at this angle, I, I'd say about a 45 degree. That really works well. Break off those wheels. So, so my rear in, into his sort of corner? Right. Exactly. And preferably on the front end, but the rear end is good too. Stick and move. All right. Come over here. Stick them over here and move. If you got the option, you know. Okay. This is this will actually be a little bit easier to deal with than it will be on the track later well, on. What do you mean this? I mean we're going to do this now? I think we should. Right. But what was this? You were telling me about a, the, the Malachi Crunch. What, what is that? That was from an episode of Happy Days where they had a demolition derby and Fonzie was in it and there was a Pinky Tuscadero. Pinky Tuscadero. Maybe you heard that name before. Yeah, vaguely, yeah. Okay, yeah. and the Malachi brothers. And they coined the Malachi Crunch term, which meant two cars pinching a car in the middle. So, so when you get crunch between two, that's that's the, the Malachi crunch. That's the Malachi right, okay. Crunch. All right, so that, that's why I've got a, a, a bad back right now, because That you... is a symptom of the Malachi crunch. Symptom. Yeah. Symptom. Right. Demolition Derby Day is almost here, and we still have tons of work to do. Derby experts Eric Griffin and Sean McKinney are ready to start customising my car. You're preparing a car to be crashed, so there's a whole load of stuff in here that you don't need. Like um, wires and fuses, you won't need those. And there's the, the wiper motor and the windscreen wiper arms. And there's the, uh, uh, the compressor for the air conditioning, you won't need that. And there's the shroud over the fan. And the fan itself, well, we'll need a fan, but it'll be a smaller one than this. And there's uh, this, which is very useful, but I've no idea what it does. And, oh, yeah, there's a whole load of cruise control stuff. And it, in later cars, you have smog control, a whole lot of it. And finally, there's the computer. Now that the engine is ready, it's time to think about the most important element of the derby, my safety. Almost everything that could be crushed by another car has to be reinforced. First, we beef up the doors with solid steel panels. Then the interior cab is fitted with thick pipes, front and back. Next, all the doors are welded closed. Thank you for the lesson, I'll leave it to the experts. We also need notches in the trunk and hood so they can be chained shut. If they flew up in the middle of a race, you couldn't see a thing. Finally, we get the road warrior treatment. Chain link fencing for the windshield to keep random car parts from flying in and me from flying out. Eric, can I stop you for a minute? Well, we've gone to all this trouble to get this, you know, get this all prepared. Now you're cutting holes in the hood. Why is that? Yeah, these are for the fire extinguisher holes. You know, in case there's a fire under the hood, we want to be able to squirt a fire extinguisher in there. A fire? Yeah. Well, there's not going to be a fire under there, is there? You never know. It's not very thick, is it? I thought, you know, these cars were made of solid stuff. I mean, 
that just bends. That pretty much does it for my car. It took two days, $500, and a lot of elbow grease. She sounds good, but she doesn't look so hot. No problem. Eric and Sean have promised to shine it up before the race. There's nothing left for me to do but wait and worry. The day has arrived. Ventura Racetrack, one of the great traditional dirt tracks. You know, Demolition Derby has thousands of fans, but they all disagree about strategy, tactics, how to win, and whether it's all just a matter of luck. Everyone agrees that Demolition Derby first appeared in the 1950s, but nobody knows exactly whose idea it was. One story is that a stock car promoter in Long Island noticed that the spectators seemed more interested in the crashes than the races. Some people say a used car dealer in Milwaukee couldn't sell his old wrecks, so he figured he could hire people to crash them and charge admission. Wherever it came from, the Derby has developed various forms. Now, this track is just a simple oval. Cars can go round and round it, or they can drive in a figure of eight, always with the possibility of a collision in the middle. But we, well, for our derby, we're just going to drive freestyle. We're going to use every single part of this track. And I see it says something about here, racing experience. Do you have any? No. None at all? So I just put none? Just none. None, OK, right. And there's nothing on this entry form about my medical insurance or, you know, anything like that. I mean, what happens if I get, you know, in an accident? Well, you assume all responsibility. However, we do have release of liability that you did sign when you got your little pit pass there. I need $50. And there you go. Thank you very much. It's official. I'm actually going to do this. Next, it's off to the pit area. It's just three hours to derby time, and the racers are starting to arrive. Here's my car now. My mentors and mechanics, Eric Griffin and Sean McKinney, have promised me a big surprise. <laughs> you know, I can't help noticing something about this car, which is that you've You've painted it pink, haven't you? Don't it's pink. It. We don't want a problem finding you. Yeah, I definitely don't want a problem. I got a pink it. car. Yeah. It's really pink, isn't it? It's pink. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So tell me, why did you choose this particular color, guys? Because we wanted to be able to see you on the track. Well, you mean when you're in the pits and, and all that? Not really. I mean, when we're out there, like chasing you around on the track. You know. Here comes another surprise. With, Eric uh, and Sean are both drive. driving in tonight's right? derby. What do you mean you're only driving? Yeah. You didn't tell me that. Surprise, surprise, What do you mean, you mean fixing my car up? And you mean fixing your own as well? Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. All right, I'm going to get in here. <laughs> You're crazy. Your car's fitted out like this? Kind of. Kind of, sort of. OK, so let me get this straight, OK? I'm sitting here. I've got the engine in front of me. I've got the gas behind me. I've got the battery acid beside me. Yes, sir. I'm driving a pink car. Yes, sir. Pink car. Against two guys who are also driving their own cars, and the same two guys who have fitted this car out. Correct. You, you know, got it. something tells me there's something going on here, right? It's getting closer and closer to derby time. With Sean and Eric now in the race, I decide to get some independent advice. I'm driving a car tonight for the first time, Demolition Derby. I've never done it before. Me too. I... You really? Yeah, first time. Listen, it's your first time too? Yeah, well, he's driving, I'm just a crew chief. Well, I'm supposed to be asking you for you know, useful tips, but you obviously don't know anything, do you? What have they told you? Well, that didn't help much. So, I find someone who's really in the know. The whole track is yours. You know, it's a wild and crazy deal. They start on both sides, they'll blow the whistle, and off you go. And when it's wet, it is so slippery that you can't walk on it. But why is it wet? I mean, why do you wet it? You want to get it wet so that the cars can't get going too fast. You want the tires to spin. You don't want the cars in a DD, especially on a large track like this, to get going more than about 20 miles an hour, because it could get pretty dangerous. Right. And once I'm out there, there are, like, no rules. I can do anything I like. We try to keep you from hitting the driver's door. So one of the rules is you're not allowed to run into the driver's door, because that could cause some injury. But any place else is fair game. This is very good news. It's a lot of fun. OK, now I'm ready to check out the competition. This here is Eric's car. This is? This is huge. This one's mine. This is massive. Essentially, it's the same as yours, just a different color. Maybe 
it's a, a essentially, little bit long. Essentially, yeah. this is a station wagon made of, like, solid steel, whereas mine is a not a station wagon, and it's made of, like, tin, right? Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's close to a compact. By the time the night's over, we'll make it a compact for you. Yeah, I bet, yeah. Peter, just have a good time with it, all right? Have a good time. Have a yeah. good time. Okay, great. It's, it's, all, it's all fun. I'll remember that. It's only an hour to race time, and the vehicles are getting their final checks. Every Derby vehicle must be inspected and approved by track officials. Safety is paramount. One of the things Adventure Raceway is very proud about is our safety crew. For every event, we have an ambulance paramedic, we have two EMTs, we have two complete fire units that are here to take care of any fire situations that we might possibly have, and uh, are very conscious about safety. We've uh, fortunately never had any serious injuries, and uh, hope that continues tonight, and uh, looking forward to a great night of racing. Gather round, guys. Welcome to the 2002 Ventura County Fair Demolition Derby. Be ready to move. We will stage you back here, and we will move you up onto the track. When you're out on the track, there will be no driving into the driver's door. If you are stationary more than two minutes, you will be stopped scoring. Keep an eye out for the red flag that indicates that there's danger on the track, somebody's on fire. We have to send an ambulance or a fire truck out on the track. So I need everybody to stop immediately. Basically, other than that, it's snow kicking, biting, gouging, scratching. All right, this is it. I'm telling you, I have played Shakespeare in front of Her Majesty the Queen and an audience of thousands. I have been to the dentist all my life. I have been shot at with guns and bows. But I have never been so scared in all my life. Even after all the preparations, my chances of winning are basically non-existent. Then again, you never know. If I get knocked out early, there's always the chance to come back again. That's right, this is just the prelims. There's another race tomorrow night. As the cars are called to the track, the adrenaline really starts pumping. We file in one by one and take our starting places. 20 customized, reinforced cars and 20 determined drivers with a single purpose. Are we ready for the countdown? Keep your own car running while causing as Here much damage go. as possible to everyone else. I'm a little slow off the line, but who wouldn't be? We spend most of our lives learning how not to crash our cars. Believe me, this driving backwards is a lot harder than it looks. Of course, for experienced racers, it's second nature. Michael Sanford, Sanford, I think, is a former winner here. Two minutes into the race, and I'm starting to get the hang of it. Suddenly, I find myself in a predicament no one warned me about. OK, I'm hooked up here. Looks like I'm in trouble. But I have to be careful of I don't get hit while I'm sitting here. Talk about joined at the hip. I'm finally moving again, but I can't seem to shake this guy. There we go. Good thing I had my face shield down. I'm finally back in the race. Now I'm having fun. So much fun, in fact, that I never see my old buddy Eric bearing down on me. Knock the wheel right off the History okay. Channel car. I've lost a, a rear wheel completely. It's been taken out. Knock the axle right out from underneath it. I think the History Channel car is history. That's it for the pink pulverizer. I'm out, but not down. Tomorrow's another day and another race. The next day, I barely recognize my car. The axle broke right there. But Eric is convinced that he and Sean can get it running in time for tonight's race. There's the end of the axle. That should be attached to what's over there. It seems only fair that they fix it. After all, Eric did most of the damage in the first place.
here we go again, second time. Cannot believe I'm going to do this again. I must be completely mad. We're off again. This time out, I'm more excited than nervous. And if I say so myself, it shows in my driving. Oh, my car's taking a beating! Take that. And that. And that. I get in as many shots as I can before my engine finally dies on me. Nothing for me to do now except sit back and watch my friends Eric and Sean battle it out for the victory. The action is fast and furious. Incredible! Eric gets caught in a Malachi crunch, and he's still going. That's it for Sean. He's out. It looks like Eric's the winner. We're going to wait for an official ruling. Remember, these guys have two minutes. But wait, the 69 car is not dead. He's moving again and heading straight toward Eric. Nose to nose, demolition derby at 30 paces. This is the way you do the winner's donut, side by side. Eric Griffin, it's the winner! As far as I'm concerned, that makes me a winner too since Eric taught me everything I know. Demolition derbies, they're not that dangerous. They require a little bit of skill and an awful lot of effort. And they are without doubt the best fun you can have on four wheels. You know, this is like bumper cars for grown-ups. It's great. <laughs>